Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here. An Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.4.5 update was released a couple hours after the Mac OS Monterey 12.4 update, which caused problems on older Macs from 2008 to 2011 that have a Bluetooth 2.1 card. So I'm going to show you how to fix that before you make the jump to 12.4 and all the fixes in the 0.4.5 release next. Let's quickly talk about the relationship between Mac OS updates and the release schedule for Open Core Legacy Patcher. And I think this is important to know because of this Bluetooth issue. Keep in mind, every time a brand new beta of macOS updates come out, the Open Core Legacy Patcher developers install it on their test device almost immediately and test it against the current version of Open Core Legacy Patcher. If everything works, that's great. And then they can continue working on improvements to the application. But if something breaks, like for example, Bluetooth 2.1 cards in 12.4, that's a pretty big issue and all the developers work together to try to fix the issue. So what my recommendation for you is, is before you go into software update and make the jump to the next version of the operating system. All you do is check the date of the Mac OS update. And if you see that there was a associated open core legacy patcher update on the same day, most likely there's a problem that was fixed in this update. So you want to click on here and take a look at the main notes right here. And if you see something like Bluetooth support was fixed in this update, then you want to take a look at that before you make the jump to the next OS version. So you don't have any problems. So let's use it as an example. This early 2011, 15 inch MacBook Pro has a Bluetooth 2.1 card in it. So if you go into software update and update to 12.4 and you didn't take a look at those notes, your system comes back up. Bluetooth is non-functional. If you have a laptop MacBook Pro, that's not as big of a deal, but I wonder if you have a Mac mini or an iMac, for example, a 2011 27 inch iMac with a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, you're not going to have Bluetooth at the time. So you're going to have to go around and find a USB keyboard and mouse to try to get the update installed and get the system all fixed up. Remember, there's no absolute rush to install a Mac OS update until you're sure that the system is going to be working okay. And normally if you want, you can wait for my video, but I, that's why I apologize that this video is late because I needed to make sure that I show you the right way and I tested it against my system before I tell you to go out there and make that update for yourself. So now that we know that and we have a plan for before installing software updates, we at least have a base of what to look for before we make that jump. Okay, now let's go over this Bluetooth issue for 12.4. First of all, who does it affect? Well, there's a really nice list here of all the Bluetooth devices that are affected by this issue. Bluetooth 2.1 cards, the 2046 and the 2070 card, and these Mac models have that card. So if one of your Macs is in this list, you're gonna wanna make sure you patch before you make the jump. Or even if you did and it's not working now, I'll still show you how to fix that. So now we let's go to our two example systems here today. They're both 2000. 11 MacBook Pros that have one that is already installed the 12.4 update and Bluetooth is broken. And then we have another system here that has not installed it yet, but I can fix that with 0.4.5. As you can see here, fixing legacy Bluetooth for Mac OS Monterey before we update. So once the update installs, Bluetooth will still be running and we don't have to do anything. Okay, else. now that we know that we want to update to 0.4.5, let's see how we can do it. Now keep in mind, I've got these different versions in here for testing, but you are usually going to only have one version in here just called Open Core Legacy Patcher. You're going to see a little arrow here. That means that you installed fresh with 0.4.4 and newer because of the automatic patching system. If you don't have an arrow in here, that means you have the application in here and it's not just an alias to the patcher in the application support folder. So to update, all we need to do is overwrite this application and we'll have the new version of 0.4.5. Now keep in mind when you start the application, it's going to go out and check for updates. And if it finds one, it'll prompt you to say, Hey, there's a new update. Here's the link to get it on GitHub. And there's a problem in 0.4.4 where it's unable to check for those updates. So if you have this version, you're going to have to go to the GitHub page manually to be able to get the 0.4.5 update. So all we need to do is scroll down here and we will download the open core patcher GUI app.zip. And it's going to download right to our downloads folder here. Okay, it'll jump up and down when it's done. We'll click on download. You'll see Open Core Legacy Patcher right in here. And all you need to do is drag it right to your applications folder. It's going to say, hey, there's already one in there called that, and we're going to replace it. Okay, now we have the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.4.5 installed on the system. As soon as this finishes verifying, we'll click on open. And here's the latest app. If you have not updated 12.4 yet, you can fix the Bluetooth, like I mentioned earlier, by using build and install open core before you make the jump to 12.4. So let's do that now. All we need to do is check these settings first before we do the build and install open core. So for example, we don't want to, if you, if you don't want to have the show boot picker on, so it has a seamless 
booting experience, you can unclick that. Or if you have any of these other settings in there selected, make sure you set them now. Then go back to the main menu, click on build and install open core, click build open core. And then let's move this out of the way for a second so we can see that fix here and we'll click view build log because we know that we're going to click this next. But if you click this next, it'll bring you to the next section, but you can't read what the fix is. So we're going to click view build log. Then we can scroll up here and see fixing legacy Bluetooth for Mac OS Monterey. So we know that that is fixed in this fix right here. So all we need to do is click on install open core. It's going to load the disks. We want to put on our internal hard drive and then our EFI partition. Click on this and then it's going to ask for our administrator password and there it goes. And then it says, Hey, to apply those settings, all we need to do is reboot and restart. Okay, we're back up from installing Open Core Legacy Patcher fixes to Bluetooth with 0.4.5 and our update is ready to go. So we could go in a software update here and update to 12.4 and our Bluetooth will be working at. Wonder if you already installed 12.4, like this machine here and your Bluetooth is broken. We can do the same thing we did in the previous part and just install 0.4.5 Open Core Legacy Patcher to our device here, open it up and install to our internal hard drive, reboot and our Bluetooth will be working like new again. Again. Click on our settings, make sure we have all of our settings here. Unclick on show boot picker, return to the main menu, and then build and install open core. Build, and then install the disk to our internal hard drive and the EFI partition. And then we'll type in our administrator password. And that's it. It'll ask us to reboot. We'll click on reboot here and click on restart when it shows up. Now you notice this machine does not have its root patches installed. So we'll see the automatic patch updating system. And then we're going to see that our Bluetooth here is all fixed and ready to go. And our automatic patching system has kicked off saying we've noticed that you installed the update and you have to install the graphics acceleration for AMD, Intel, and also the legacy keyboard backlight. We'll click on OK, enter an administrator password. Patching the system. Now we got a reboot prompt here. We'll click on reboot and we'll be all ready to go with the 12.4 update fixed up here. One other thing you want to make sure after an update is, is that if you're using beta blur for non-metal Macs from 2008 to 2011, you want to go back into the open core legacy patcher and make sure that those are set. So you can tell right off the bat, if you click on the menu bar here, and if you see some transparent squares, you can go into open core legacy patcher, make sure you have beta blur selected here and then go into settings and then non-metal settings and make sure these are select. They are, you're good to go, but if they're not, you can select these and return to settings and then log out and log back in and it'd be all fixed up. Now let's talk about some of the fixes in the 0.4.5 update. First of all, up here is the section where some of the major fixes are called out or major issues that are fixed in this release. Down here is where you can go and look at the full change log and you'll have to click this button to expand and you'll see all the fixes, even the detailed developer notes. But let's go over some of the major fixes. First of all, if you watch my 12.4 update video, you'll notice that there is a fix for non-metal Macs where there was a double menu bar clock here and that's fixed in this release. Also, there was some dismiss buttons within some of the menu systems. You couldn't click dismiss or couldn't click cancel. That's fixed in this release. VNC support for remote management for you to be able to control machines with VNC was fixed on TerraScale 2 GP. And there were some other fixes, including some 12.4 installers not listening by default when you were done. Oh. Some more improvements to the GUI application. There is a GUI prompt for when you boot a mismanaged open core configurations. Example, booting a MacBook Pro 8.1 configuration on a MacBook Pro 11.1. Now this goes back to whenever you build an open core configuration installed to a hard drive or USB, always try to build it on the system that you're building in because it's customized for that system. But let's say that you want to build a USB on another system. You can do that as long as you go into the settings here and then change the Mac model that you're going to build the configuration for, and then you'll be fine. But if you forget about that and boot a system up with a different configuration, there's now a warning saying, Hey, you're booting an 8.1 when you're actually a 11 comma one, you want to go back into the settings, build open core and install it to the USB or the hard drive to fix that issue. There's another improvement here that will add a checksum verification to the install assistant download. This is a new option to check the validation of the 
Big Sur or Mac OS Monterey installer application on your USB installer just to see that it's not damaged. There's been a couple of people that have said, I booted to the USB and it says the installer is damaged. Hopefully this will fix that and catch that before the reboot to be able to install to prevent that error. Now we also see the add local root patcher version info to the previous patch. We already showed you that in the application. When you click on return to main menu and you click post install root patch, you can see that last date when you're patched. So you know that, hey, I already patched this or I installed an update and the root volume was patched. So you don't come in here and say, hey, I already did this. I don't know if I did this or not. Now you know, cause it's labeled here. Now, another thing that was added here is the asset information. If you go down here and look at the assets and you're wondering what all this stuff is, there's a really nice explanation here of what each one is if you have any questions. The open core patcher GUI app is what we're using. It's a visual based graphical user interface application to be able to do the settings and it's recommended for all users. Now, if you've watched some of my original videos, you'll be used to the TUI or the terminal user interface application. And that's a terminal command line based applications that is still here and available if you want to be able to use it right here. And that is usually recommended only if you're already familiar with it because it's a little bit more difficult for newer users to get a hang of. Also, there's the auto package assets package, and this is the additional resources used by the open core patcher that are automatically pulled when needed. And you do not need to download this or use it manually. McCullough, who is the co-developer of open core legacy patcher, put a submission into Apple to be able to attend a special event at WWDC 2022. And it was only a very small amount of people that were picked and he was selected, but he's in college right now and he's living in Canada and would have been very difficult for him to be able to fly all the way down to Cupertino, California, USA to be able to attend this event. So I said, this is an amazing community. Let's put together a GoFundMe to see if we can get you some help to be able to get down there because so many people are of appreciative of all the work that you put into this patcher. You absolutely crushed it within two days. The funding amount was matched and exceeded. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I really appreciate that everybody jumped in to help. And I know McCola is excited to be able to attend WWDC 2022. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. And I thank you very much for giving to this GoFundMe if you are a part of it. The update that came out for 0.4.5 is the last Open Core Legacy patch update before WWDC 2022. And that's because Mac OS 13 is coming out. Who knows what Mac OS 13 is going to bring? Could it be a huge update to change so many things and it's going to cause problems with the patcher? We don't know. Or maybe there's some incremental changes that still have the patcher working and only a couple small fixes will be had to be made. We won't know until we get the first beta copy at WWDC on June 6th. That's going to be a huge day and all the developers are going to download the latest beta of Mac OS 13 and test it against Open Core Legacy Patcher. And we've got our fingers crossed that we don't see any major issues. And this is a great time to thank all of the developers that are working on Open Core Legacy Patcher. All of you are absolutely amazing and you should see all the collaboration that is done between the developers, whether it's developing for the current metal supported Mac or the team that works for non-metal Macs to make sure that those patches still work. You guys are absolutely amazing and all of the users of Open Core Legacy Patcher truly appreciate you. And that's it for the Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.4.5 update video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I can give you a hand. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And I want to thank all my viewers and especially all my Patreon members. You guys are awesome and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.